James, Toyota tends to be somewhat quiet about its technological achievements, while others are boastful, no names mentioned. How competitive are you in self-driving car technology? I think many people would agree that the Toyota production system is the world's best system for manufacturing at scale electromechanical systems, the hardware of cars. What has changed in the last 20 years is that the amount of software has increased dramatically. And our company is really trying to complement the ability to produce great quality hardware with high quality software and then together make new products of mobility for the future. But what people want to know is do you have the capability to take a leadership role in self-driving car technology? Is that something that Toyota wants and is that something that, to that Toyota can have? I think one of the interesting parts of the equation that is the unpredictable is artificial intelligence and new capabilities that are yet unknown. But many of the modern artificial intelligence systems are powered by data. And in order to achieve the scale and the amount of data and the quality of the data, data and diversity of data, you need to essentially be a large enough uh, maker. And uh, Toyota being one of the world's largest with you know, over 10 million cars per year produced, has the potential to unlock this data advantage that we can then turn into a capability advantage through our artificial intelligence systems. So is that to say that some of the other would-be competitors in this arena just don't have what it takes because they can't manufacture at that scale and thus can't acquire the necessary amount of data? I don't want to call them tourists, but you can give me a word if you prefer. Well, there are many, many efforts that are trying to solve a piece of the puzzle, but I do believe that you actually need strength in hardware and software and technology capability that's uh, cutting edge. And it's hard for just one player to do that. So Toyota as a group is forming partnerships. Uh, we want to lead in terms of providing the best mobility platforms. So instead of just a, a, a car that you would personally own, the vehicles of the future could be shared. They could be all electrified with fuel cells or with hybrid drives or pure electrics. And they're going to change the design of our future cities. Most of our cities were designed around the conventional cars. In the future, if we have all this new mobility technology, we could actually have the movement of people from the rural areas to the urban centers uh, made more productive and sustainable by having better mobility, better cities that are designed to take advantage of new mobility. If you look at the autonomous vehicle landscape, how many companies have what it takes to be competitive? How many are bona fide players? One of the things I like to talk about is there's the software that runs on the car that provides autonomy. And then, of course, you have the sensors, the hardware, the compute. It unfortunately isn't that hard to make a demo. Eric, you and I could go to a dorm room and hack a Prius and make a self-driving Prius, but that would never be a product. In order to validate and verify the functional safety of that system, we actually need to have a huge team of software, tools, resources, testing, closed course, uh, as well as all of the things that you would normally do to validate and verify that a product is, is ready to go and ready for market. And that is hard. Unless you have experience, unless you have a lot of resources, that's going to be difficult. Um, so although many people can make demonstrations of self-driving capability, I think to actually bring it to market uh, is a lot harder. What's the future for an automobile manufacturer that hasn't, to date, made significant advances in autonomous driving? A lot of people uh, are not aware of Toyota's history. We actually have thousands of patents, more than many, many of the other competitors in uh, automated driving, dating back over 20 years. In fact, uh, you know, the current uh, CTO of Waymo uh, worked at Toyota before uh, coming to Google. Um, and I worked with him when I was at Google as well. Uh, we've been able to attract over the last 10 years, especially with the creation of the Toyota Research Institute, some of the world's best leaders. Uh, and uh, that, I think, is really exciting. I was thinking more of your competitors. Oh, sure. If a company hasn't 
up to now made significant progress in autonomous driving. Is that company dead on arrival 10 years from now? I think it's an open question, and the honest answer is I'm not sure. But I do think that um, if you look at the history of automotive technology, um, the components, the technology, if it becomes commoditized, then it's possible to integrate into many different types of vehicles, even if it's not invented at that OEM. But I think the difficulty and the thing that's changing is that the software is becoming so complicated that the amount of cost in order to develop it is increasing to the point where the system integration cost and the testing cost is becoming insurmountable for many, many of the players. So unless you're fully committed, I think it's very hard to compete. There are some important philosophical considerations that you have to uh, take when developing something as advanced and complex as a self-driving vehicle. Is death an unacceptable price to pay for progress? Gil Pratt, who's the CEO of Toyota Research Institute, draws an analogy to vaccines. In the early days of vaccine development, there were there was an understanding that the vaccines would actually reduce illness um, and reduce diseases like polio. But in the early days, the manufacturing standards weren't quite perfect, and some kids were accidentally infected with polio. And the result was those companies went out of business and nobody made polio vaccines. But then they created an insurance fund and they allowed the companies to start manufacturing again and then polio was essentially eradicated in the United States. So um, every new technology is going to have some risks. Um, we know that this can benefit society. Most of the accidents are caused by human error. So in partnership, we would like to build technology that enhances human ability and uh, provides a safe path forward for this uh, uh, technology. But we really need a partnership between scholars, companies and governments and society at large to really find the path forward to introduce this because we know that 1.3 million people dying every year is not acceptable and the technology can help. How long until we see your software ship in a vehicle and what car will that be? Well our first product is actually launching next year um, and we have a whole product roadmap after that so uh, look forward to seeing some new product announcements coming soon from our group. Uh, but in the future, I believe that, uh, at least I hope, that we will have technology that when I'm too old to drive, I won't have to. Great, James. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.